Using the valve, we're getting ready. We're going to the 2250. I thought I'd show you one. I just got relatively close. We're using the 60 degree stone, which is, you know, real close to being straight up, although not perfectly. But when you're using that, this is your workhorse here. This is the one really doing the, the damage. This does the enlargement and pulls a lot of the concentric in. And then your 30 degree stone adjusts it to where on the valve, that black line there that where I took a marker. Let me zoom in. We're going to see a line where the 60 and the 30 come together and it positions it on the, on the valve face, the 45, which I wanted to add. I've noticed that a lot of the valve companies now are closing this gap down. I don't know if it's a money saving issue or what it is or whether the carbide cutters are able to get it so close, but notice the face of the valve is really thin. So when you're using the stones, it really makes you have to work hard uh, to be able to get it. But what I like to do is uh, this is what I set my seat with to get it close. I like to put it here. You can a lot of people put it in the center. I put it down by ten thousandths from the edge to get maximum valve diameter. It's about airflow trying to get as much face of the valve. Typically with stones, <laughs> I'm ashamed to admit it, but to do one of these precision with stones takes me anywhere from three to five hours. If you get them all the same width, all the same position. But the one thing I'm not ashamed to admit is, buddy, nothing beats the stones as far as concentricity. I do put my seat run out dial, which y'all have seen me do it before, but the reason I'm showing you this, notice how wide that the 60 is. That's my digger. Um, I cannot believe that there's that much to come out because usually I've done two 250s and I found out something. The valve company has sent me a 2.300. This, this is a 2.300 valve. I thought it was a little bit bigger and that's okay. It's just more work for me because now you can see how much of that 60 angle is there. When I put the 30 and pull it in, I'll have to go in here and recut it all this bowl back out after y'all know how many bunches of hours I've got opening up. Uh, that's the biggest I've ever carried one of these two is a two three hundred valve diameter. But I wanted to show you that. I'm going to show you in a minute how I set the seats up. But I'm going to let you watch me do one of these to see the kind of digging that I do. All right. Hey, to get you relatively close when you're cutting these seats, enlarging them, Without going blind, this um, is a type of pointer or indexer. And what I do is, you can see my black lines once again. What I do is I stand directly on top of it and I adjust these to try. And what it's trying to do is give me an idea when I relate to the head. Now, I'll pull it to the top side. What I try to do is, this is your adjustment. I'm turning this. And I'm trying to get the pointers where they just kiss off past the top of the 45 degree face. That gives me this measurement right here. And while not accurate, I'm not using it with a caliper or anything. It's an indicator. Now let me show you how I do it. Okay. I'll take this and then I look. I set it right there and try to get a balance. And that gives me a visual idea. Wow, I'm all the way up into the combustion chamber. Which when you go from a 206 to a 2300, you're going to pass this whole seat area. What happens then is part of the combustion chamber becomes the seat in the head, which that's okay because it's iron. That's the good thing about cast iron versus aluminum is you can go crazy on valve sizes without having to sweat the hardened seat because with an aluminum head, the only thing you can do is get about 20 thousandths from the edge of the pressed in hardened seat. And buddy, that's as big a valve as you can go. Just like when y'all saw me on... Uh, Carpathian 2010s of uh, the the LT1 aluminum heads. I was stuck. The biggest valve I could 
put in his head was a 1.97. I couldn't go to two inch. You could, but it would push it right to the edge of the seat, hanging off, almost touching the aluminum. Thing is, you go in there digging, trying to enlarge that valve. You're going to thin that hardened seat, and then you can get a, a, a release problem. So I looked at it, measured it, having keeping the seat thicknesses. That's fine. Nobody made that valve. There was a company that makes one, but it's not used for that purpose. So I just ended up with the LT1 uh, heads that were, ended up going from 170 to 197. Uh, they're using 194150 valves. And it's quite the controversy on his heads, but I don't want to get blended off into that on these BBCs. It's just I've had a lot of phone calls this weekend over it. Anyway... Uh, so you see that I'm taking this, and this gives me a spot idea. Now, once you get one done, okay, once you get uh, the 60 degree and get one dug, like this right here, what happens is you can look at it visually and tell just about the width. And that's usually when I'll take either um, a set of calipers or some other tool that I got, and kind of go between and measure uh, so that I, I want this same width on all of them. When I start getting close, that's when I do my pop, which I'll show you, okay? This is one of my measurement tools. It's a smaller version of my other pointer. And what I'm using this for, which, be honest with y'all, I don't use it very often unless it's something really critical because I've been doing this 25 years. For you guys that are just two or three years into doing your valve job or even the beginners, um, you use something like this. Once I get the digging done and get the pop done, which is why I paint them black, pop it, and then that's going to tell me where the position is. Once I get it close, that I can look at this and say, you know what, I lay this on there, wow, I'm getting close to the width, I better stop and check, because if you go too far, then you have to use that 30, you're going to end up digging a machinist ridge, but there is one thing I wanted to add, and I'm not patting myself on the back, guys, I, I've already told y'all it's not how I am, what it is, when you go in there and do the pre-cut on the bowls, because if you did not go in there, or I did not go in there with my big uh, hog master and just butcher this out almost to the edge of that 206 c I'd be busting stones like there's no tomorrow. Right now, I've only busted one, and that's simply because I've cut it out and so much with my hog before I even attempted the valve job. Now, what I didn't realize at the time was that uh, the company had sent me 2300 diameter instead of 2250. I'm not complaining. I really wanted 2300 anyway, but it was a lot of work for me uh, that I'm not getting paid for. If I, I can't tell you the price as customer confidentiality, but if you knew how much I was charging for this work, uh, besides calling me a damn stupid idiot, y'all would think I'm really desperate, but that's not the case. I'm just into what I do. I lose it when I throw on the MP3 earphones and go to town. I go into another world. But anyway, that's what I use this for. Measuring that width so that I know, okay, I got to stop now and check it and then begin with the 30. So what I'm going to do is set up over here and let you see how much it just busts and how easy you have to be doing that 2250 from 20, or excuse me, 2300 from 206. What I do is I take the pilot. This is a .3735 and I'm going to slide it down in there. That's a little bit tough. I bet I got some, uh, hold on a minute. Bet I got just a touch of uh, dirt in it. No big deal. Hell, went just about in there anyway. It don't matter. So I put that in there like that. Then I use two springs because of the depth and relation of the bowl. How deep it is to this 60. See if I just put that little one in there, it's going to rest on it. You got to have this spaced like this so that you're going and touching because if you don't, it'll start cracking and come up 
and just bust your stones all to pieces. You gotta have the right amount of pressure and this is what takes sometimes years to develop this feel of knowing that it's just lightly digging and it just takes forever because if you try to cut this out, you start beating it, it will bust your stones, not to mention it don't do a good job of getting the concentricity state with straight with the new guides that we just put in. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and start that process. You see my bouncing and how I've got that. Okay, and here we go. Let's go ahead and begin our touch. I'm just gonna try to let you follow me. Notice how you hear the bumps when it's sitting there grinding. Ba 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 That has a lot to do with it. Now, just to take a look. Okay, see how it's starting to get that width. Now, we both know that it's considerably smaller when you take that there. Cause so see, look at how far. I mean, man, I've got a bunch to chew, but that's what I do. I'd go back and forth if I didn't know how to visually look at it and get it close just from the years of doing it. Whoa! That's what you gotta watch out for, see? And it's just concentration, you hear that big pop. Well, there's a good and a bad side to that. The good is that tells me that when I was putting my guides in, man, did old head bites here do a super awesome job of getting that guide straight. In relation to this, there is a hand talent to that because if you get them crooked, it won't bounce like that. It'll sit there and pull to one side and chew. When you get them really perfectly straight, that's when you're going to start having this pow, 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 because it's trying to put this that's perfect inside of a circle that's perfect, and that's the awesome bouncing. So in a way, it's a good thing. It tells me I've done a great job here, but in a way, it's a bad thing because it tears the stones. That's why. I just do it a little bit, stop, and I, now I got to reface. But the other thing is, don't let the stone get too hot. This is a trade secret. You do it for a while, and you can either blow it off or you set it to the side because when that thing starts getting hot, that's when the heat will cause it to crack. That's one of the considerations. Not many people will ever tell you all that. I just told you a good one. All right, I'm going to back off a minute. What I'm going to do is go ahead and get that done, and you'll see that between the two, because i got to watch my film, uh, there's really nothing to see except boring grinding, and if there's anything that comes up, I'll show you, but let's go ahead and get this one done so you can compare one to the other. Okay. Like I said, you can look at the differences now between the widths where I've dug for that valve, and look over here, I'm about halfway through on this side, and I just keep digging to try to match the width of that. Remember I told you I was using this as a guide and that kind of gets me close. But anyway, let's do the digging and get all that set up. As you can see on the exhaust, it's the same situation. Look how much width of this here of the exhaust. I'm going to try to bring you over there. I mean, that's all the digging right there. That one angle is a 60 degree. That's you're enlarging it for the big valve with the edge being up here at the green. That's where your seat's going to be. When you look at that and come over here to one that's untouched, it's just obvious the amount of valve enlargement. And you back up and you try to get them in the same shot. Look at that. Okay. Um, just a tremendous amount. Okay, the intakes on this one head is done, and I actually run them a little farther, get them right, right at the edge of the pile, because remember, i got to come back in here with a 30, which is your second angle. Pull that in so that it's got a little bit of 30, and then make the line where they touch be right where I want it on the valve, which you go up and down, down with a 60, up with the 30. That's your positioning. Okay, so... I'll go ahead, finish the exhaust, and I'll go ahead and do the other head, and then we'll start coming back with the 30, and I'll show you how that's positioned once again. Although I've done this on other heads, I wanted to show you on this one here because of the amount of material 
Remember, I've already went in here with my butcher hog and just cut this to pieces. And then to go in here and I have to go in the bowls again, which a decision was made last night to go ahead and redo the bowls and open them up for the valves because there was a lot of work still involved with it and applied. It always comes down to money and application. But um, I made it pretty tempting for him, and this right here will complete uh, the cross-sectional area plot from the entrance all the way up uh, to the valve. So we got an okay on that, so y'all are going to get to see how I lay into that and do it, and this all comes together. All right, so anyway, that's where we're at right now. There's the exhaust. I'll go ahead and tack them, then we'll come back. The thing I wanted to take and show you just a minute, I just started with the 60, the first initial hit. Look what I got here. Look how thin the 60 is on this side. Then over here, it doubles in its width. Now, when I got this head, some of the guides were wore out terribly bad. Uh, I could literally shake the valve back and forth on some of them and some of them are not. This is a good example of what happens. What you got here is you got some guides that were real loose and when I tried to put the liners in it tries to find its own home and in doing so it'll move the location of the guide off center which this right here is the reason that whenever you put guides in a head you have to do a three angle valve job because it's going to be off center from the original position it's not going to put it back in exactly the same spot so it'll dig meat more on one side than the other. Okay? I'd say that's probably about 250 and that's about maybe 125. You can just see how it started digging. It's taking more out here. Now, it can also be a sign that when I was porting the head that I took more out on one side of the bowl than the other. But to dispel that myth, let me lay this one on you. When we come over here and look at the two beside of it, all six ports, four on the other head, and these two, perfect roundness. But I remember there was one or two of these guides that were extremely loose. If that was true, then all these bowls would be off. My consistency in my porting and cutting the material is not bragging, but it's, it's fair to middling. But notice when you come over here, the initial cut, wow, I mean, that's just unreal so I'll have to go back and forth with the 60 30 60 30 and it's going to start chewing more here alleviating here then eventually it's going to balance out and make this circle perfectly round in the relationship of the 90 degree turn from the guide to the seat all right I just wanted to show you how it looks so that if y'all ever get a pair of heads from a so-called performance machine shop you take the heads apart and you see one side real thin, the other side real wide, you just got shafted. First of all, they didn't even do a three angle. Most shops, this would, believe it or not, this would be the 45 degree angle. Fellas, I have seen it. It's just horrific work. It's so hard to find somebody that's going to really do what they're supposed to do. But I'm trying to show y'all the things that you can watch that you can catch these crooks in 